What's up, seven, eight students? This is Mrs. Talati. And Mrs. Cervantes. And together we are Mrs. Mrs. Cervati. Hey, so we're rolling into 1.2, adding integers with different signs. Your essential understanding for today is I can add integers with different signs. Remember, you are responsible for writing your key terms, uh, definitions in your note taker. It was echoing last time. Okay. Yeah. So your first key term, very simple, is the sum. You guys learned this back in what, first grade, I think? Which is the result when two or more numbers are added. It does not matter if they are positive or negative. So just for example, if we have two plus three, the sum of two plus three is five. If I have a negative two plus a negative three, the sum of those integers is a negative five. Um, zero pairs is when you add a positive. So we're gonna go back to the counters. So here is my positive counter and a negative counter. That together, we call this a positive one and a negative one. These together cancel out and they are known as a zero pair. And we do want you guys to be familiar with um, counters and how they look in relation to integer problems. Okay, and then looking at additive inverse, this is one of the properties that you've probably already learned. The opposite, it means the opposite of a number. So if you have a two and you add negative two to it, it's the additive inverse and that will always equal zero. So you could even start with negative seven. If you add positive seven, you'll always end up with zero. Okay, let's look at the next one. So we're gonna start out just like we did in one one where we are modeling with counters. Remember that positive counters are represented with a yellow, oops, we'll go that route. And then negative counters or negative numbers are represented with a red counter. So if we look at our first problem, we represent our positive three with three counters. We are gonna add a negative two, which means we have two red counters. And at this point now, we identify that we have one zero pair and two zero pair. So those are gone, which leaves me with a positive one as my answer. And again, we can just write it as a one. So remember the zero pairs count, uh, cancel out and whatever you're left with is the sum of those two integers. Same thing goes if we start with a negative number. I have a negative six, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have three positives. I'm gonna look at, for, oh, like that. For every red and yellow that match up, they wipe out, so there's one zero pair, two zero pair, and three zero pair, and then I can see that I'm left with three red counters, which means my answer is a negative three. Okay, so then let's look at modeling with a number line. Remember again, you're adding with two integers and they're different signs. So you're adding integers with different signs. So if we start at positive four, what color are we on? So if we start at positive four and we're adding a negative three, which direction do we add a negative three? We would be going left. So we're gonna go left three spaces, one, two, three, and that puts us at a positive one, okay? If we're doing negative seven plus five, we're gonna start at negative seven. We're adding positive five, so we're adding in a positive direction, five spaces, one, two, three, four, five, and that will leave you at negative two. Okay, do you wanna do the roll here? We can look at it, we're gonna start it out. Yeah, okay, so we talked about shortcuts, there's shortcuts, so that's modeling it, looking at the zero pairs, one negative, one positive, zero each other out, and then looking at the number line. If we were shortcutting the rule, we would say something more like when you're adding with different signs, you really subtract and keep, write this down in your notebook, pause it, and if you need to write it down, keep the sign of the, all right here, bigger group. Okay, and what we mean by group is if you're looking at Ms. Talati's chips that she was doing, the counters, so if you're looking at the bigger group. So if I'm looking, if I have the three yellow, oops, too close. The three yellow, your three positive, and then you have your two negative. When I say bigger group, which color of chips has the, has the most chips? Which color? Yellow has more chips, that's your bigger group of chips. There's three. 
and that's positive, so your answer would be positive, just how Ms. Talati showed you that it's positive one. I kind of like okay. that, taking the rule and tying it back to what the counters look like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe we got practicing in class a little bit will help too. Yeah. Okay. So then looking at negative six, same idea. So if we're using the rules, subtract, and you're really, remember, think back, you're subtracting the absolute values. So you're subtracting the absolute value of negative six. Maybe we should show that too. So remember, it's all about the absolute values, but we tend to not do that when we're, when we're calculating it in our heads. So absolute value of negative six is six. Absolute value of three is three. You subtract them, which gives you three, but then you keep the sign of the bigger group. So let's look here. You're, you have six negatives, and you have three positives. Clearly, which one is your bigger group of chips? The red negatives have the bigger group. So then your answer is going to be a negative three. I like that. Okay. Do you want to add on anything? anything? No, I really think that's going to help a lot of them identify the sign. Even yeah. they can connect it back to thinking about chimps in their head. Right, and even if you want on your paper as you're starting, you could do like Ms. Talati showed you guys, red, red, red. You could just do R's and Y's. Um, but eventually you're going to be able to look at this and just know six is your bigger group of chips. You have six red ones, three yellow ones, so your sign has to stay negative. You keep the sign of the bigger group. Okay? I like it. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to apply the rules for the next two problems. So think to yourself, if you have a negative 11, and I'm just going to do this one out again. We're going to get to the point where this is in our heads. Uh, but we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And, oh, thank you. We don't have 11 yellows. We have a negative. So hopefully we pop that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's all 11. We can think to ourselves that that is more chips than our positives, which means our answer is going to be a negative. I'm like the queen of doing that. Negative. <laughs> we'll get there. So if you think to yourself, with 11, the absolute value of 11 minus 6 is going to give us a 5. And because the bigger group is a negative, our answer is going to be a negative 5. All right, and then if we're using, look back to the properties that we did in our definitions, additive inverse. So when you're adding the negative and positive of the same value, it's always going to equal what? Zero. If you laid out 37 red counters and 37 yellow counters, they're all going to zero each other out. Um, so that's the, this is an example of, let's write it again, additive inverse. Okay, and that's on, that's, that's on your first page with your definitions. Okay, so multi-step problem. Bart and Sam played a game in which each player earns or loses points during each turn. A player's total score after two turns is the sum of his points earned or lost. So let's look. Here's where what I Circle see so far. Too. One of our vocab words. Is it yep. over here? Okay. The player with the greater score after two turns wins. Bart earned 123 points and lost 180 points. Sam earned 185 points and lost 255 points. Which person won the game? So let's do this. Ms. Talati is going to be Bart, and I will be Sam. So remember, we want to identify the earned, because you guys are going to start to experience or read a lot of different language in math where you have to know if it's positive or negative. So earning points is a positive, losing points is a negative. So I'm Bart, and I earned... 123 points in a problem that told us it was going to be a sum which indicates the operation at which we're going to use so it's a plus and then I lost 180 so that's where I put the negative 180 now I want to point out a couple of you guys asked about the parentheses set this parentheses set here is just used to break up the signs so it's to keep the, pl uh, the plus away from the negative um, a lot of you go back to the order of operations and there's not much we can do right so let's use the rule. Let's take, and we're going to take the absolute value. So I have uh, a 123 and a, well, and a make. I don't want to do it like that because we want to identify that this is our larger number. So if I take the. You still take, you, they can do it in their head and take the absolute value. You take 180 and subtract 123. Yeah. You can still take the absolute value of them. You just don't have to write it out. Right. So we'll go here and we get 57. If we think in our heads, this would give us 
123 yellows and 180 reds, therefore our bigger group is a negative. So my answer will be a negative. So Bart score, so Bart lost overall in two turns. That's what it means, right? Points. 57 yep. points. Yep. Okay, Sam earned 185. And what lost 255, so earned 185 and lost 255. So we're adding because Ms. Tawadi again said it was sum. So we lost 255. Again, you can in your head take the absolute value of these, but you guys remember. Because you have to subtract these, like Ms. Talati just said, you have to have your bigger group on the top to subtract. Please don't try to subtract 255 from 185 when you write it this way, okay? So your bigger number needs to be on top. 255 minus 185. Take the time to come off on the side of your paper and write that. And I might be, you guys might not be able to see this. Hope you, hopefully you can see that. So seven. Okay, so I get 70. And then my bigger group, so like she pointed out, this would be 185 yellow chips. This would be 255 red chips. So the bigger group is the 255, so I have a negative 70 as my answer. Okay? And then, which person won the game? They're, they're checking to see if you have knowledge of your negatives on the number line as well. So which score is higher? A lot of you are going to say that negative 70 is higher, maybe. However, think of the number line. The bigger the negative number, the smaller the value. So who actually won the game? I did. Ms. Tawadi did. Bart did. And you want to think about also which number is closest to zero, because the closer it is to there zero, the go. larger it is. Yes. All right. So now you guys got a few to try on your own. Um, in find each sum, we do not dictate as to whether you need to use the chips, the number line, or the rule. Um, any work that you do need to, needs to be on this paper as far as um, subtraction goes, and then write the problems out for the word problems. Okay, have a good day, you guys. Bye.